investments are manifested. Road to poor grace, federal government inaugurates section two of the Kado Maiduguri Road. Youths obey the clearance call, no job, no match from next year. Tonight also, Royal Relief, Obba of Benin receives deeds to artifacts looted from his forefathers. This is NTA Network News. I am Kenan Ima Aburikel. We are live in Abuja. Adela Komia Kara joins from Lagos and Mohammed Ibrahim is in our Maiduguri studio. Welcome. Lack of knowledge about the functions of legislature has curated the erroneous impression that an effective legislature lies in being antagonistic to the executive. These and other reasons are responsible for the low perception index of the legislature. The president of the Senate, Ahmad Lawan, made this position while delivering the Maiden Distinguished Parliamentarians Lecture Series organized by the National Institute for Legislative and Democratic Studies. National Assembly Correspondent Dayo Ogunshala reports. This is the first lecture in the series, an value addition from the mandate given to the National Institute for Legislative and Democratic Studies. Declaring hope on the lecture, President Mohamed Buhari, represented by the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, believes that the forum offers a platform to dissect available data. I hope that it will present an opportunity to the legislature to remind itself of its mandate and the exercise thereof to all Nigerians, so as to avoid the frictions always associated with some interpretation. The, the, the critical role of National Assembly requires that people who are involved do not just remain on hearsay, but are supposed to be knowledgeable enough. Taking participants through the intellectual engagement titled The Legislature, Legislative Mandate, and the People the reality and the public perception. President of the Senate established that being the most accessible by the people, the legislature does not always enjoy positive image. More to this, however, sometimes the negative perception of the legislature can be attributed to a lack of knowledge and understanding of the role of the legislature and how it contributes to democratic governance. On other occasions, the misperception is due to a lack of sufficient information on the part of the public. The erroneous perception, notwithstanding, Dr. Ahmad Lawan says the Ninth Assembly has covered more miles. Speaker of the House of Representatives, joined by the convener, expressed optimism. The sector series is in furtherance of the shared commitment of the Ninth National Assembly and the Institute to expand the civic space and enlarge the marketplace of ideas. If there's such an engagement, undertaken at regular intervals is critical to improving legislative opponents and in the process encourage citizens' participation and dialogue. Let us take advantage of this lecture and understand what the National Assembly stands for. You don't have to agree with everything he has said, but please fault him on facts and not on emotion. There were good with messages from local and international partners. In Abuja, Dayo Gunshola. NTA News. The documentation process of transferring the two returned Benin artifacts to the Palace of the Oba of Benin has been concluded and um, the document has been officially handed over to the Oba of Benin. Nigeria's High Commissioner to the United Kingdom, who represented President Muhammad Buhari while making the presentation, re-emphasized the federal government's commitment to return all stolen artifacts to their original homes. Obehi Ottawa Aprizai reports. Benin residents from all walks of life and royal visitors from different parts of the country, including the Emir of Kanu and representatives of the Oni of Ife, thronged the palace of the Oba of Benin to witness the signing and presentation of the deed of transfer of the artifacts to the Oba of Benin. I have the honor and privilege to transfer this respect artifacts to you. So, uh, the, uh... For the 
celebrate this victory by returning this back as a victory cup for celebration. Show that we are moving forward and we are standing independent on our own. This will attract everybody all over the world now to Edo State to Nigeria. President Muhammadu Buhari, through his representative, stressed the need to sustain the campaign to bring back the remaining artifacts. My presence in the new kingdom today is in fulfillment of the desire and express directive of Muhammad Buhari, DCFR, President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, to return the repossessed artifacts to where it was originally found. For the Oba of Benin, it is double celebration as it marks not only his fifth coronation anniversary, but what he says is a new era in Benin history. It is not our intention now to dwell on the past, rather, we wish to be followed and solve the subject of restitution and compensation for the acts that happened in the past. The Okuko and Benin bronze head, which were among the thousands of Benin artifacts, catered away in 1897, were returned to Nigeria by the University of Cambridge and the University of Aberdeen. In Benin, Obehio Tuba Prasai, NT News. The Minister of Finance, Zainab Ahmed, says a major policy thrust of the Finance Bill 2022 is to close tax loopholes following the coming into effect of the Petroleum Industry Act, PIA. It was during her presentation at a public hearing on the bill before the House of Representatives Committee on Finance. National Assembly correspondent Lamia Lee reports. The Finance Bill 2022, like the previous finance bills, is crafted to sustain the fiscal reforms introduced from 2019 to support the implementation of the budget. The bill covers five key policy areas to support the 2022 budget of economic growth and sustainability. Areas of reform include tax administration to make the Federal Inland Revenue Service more efficient, international taxation with regards to e-commerce and digital activities, and domestic revenue mobilization. Our ongoing reforms of the fiscal past six years are yielding tangible results and we need to do more. There's also the possibility of introducing new taxes, new tariffs, new levies as the economy is now on a recovery on a recovery path. House Speaker Femi Gwajabi Amila, who was represented, says the bill not only seeks to protect interests of investing public and businesses, but ensure accountability at all levels of government. Finance Bill seeks to introduce strategic and broad-minded positive reforms that will engender best practice. Statutorily check borrowing by local, states, and federal government. The only way we can bring this country out of our present state is to look for genuine way of paying our taxes without even being coerced or without being laws being made for it. In another development, the Minister of State Environment during an appearance at an investigative hearing by the House Committee on whose community said remediation work in all spill impacted communities of Oguni land will be completed in 2022. The issue of artisanal refining, as we are doing the cleanup, that is still going on. So this is one uh, request I will throw to this committee. Collaborate with us on that. Let us see how we can end artisanal refining. The yearnings of the people from that part of the world can be addressed as Mr. President expects. What we're interested in is the remediation. The Nigeria All Spill Detection and Response Agency, NOSDRA, and Management of Hydrocarbon Pollution Remediation Project, HYPREP, brought documents as requested by the committee to facilitate its inquiry into delays on the ongoing remediation work from the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NCA News. The federal government is willing to make more policies that will enhance and promote indigenous content in order to drive the digital economy of the country. The Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Professor Issa Alipantami, said this at the ninth regular meeting of the National Council on Communications and the Digital Economy. ICT correspondent Joseph Johnson reports. For days, 
These ICT practitioners from across the country have been brainstorming on how best to improve the performance of the sector as they took turns to appraise their respective contributions at the state level. Their recommendation settles in the hands of the Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, who readily gave approval to their desire for further actions. The major challenge today with regards to indigenous content, as far as I'm concerned, has nothing to do with government policies, but rather with the quality and quantity of our indigenous product. This challenge lies on our tables, that we must work, out to get, work together between the private and the public sector to enhance the quality of our indigenous content to increase the economic growth and viability as a nation, we must be ready to expand our digital technology in all aspects of our lives. Some states got awards in different categories for their efforts, as Oyo State won the overall best state in digital technology. Joseph Johnson, NTA News. Meanwhile, reactions have continued to trail the recently approved national policy on 5G networks for Nigeria. Again, ICT correspondent Joseph Johnson, while taking a look at emerging concerns, reports that although the move seemed to have reopened the discuss of divergent views, the Commission has concluded its 3.5 gigahertz spectrum auction. 5G finally to be deployed in Nigeria after getting the nod of the federal government which some industry players say seemed like the only obstacle against the deployment of the technology in the country. But the approval by the Federal Executive Council has once again brought to the fore the controversies surrounding the good, bad and ugly sides of the fifth generation technology network, an advanced form of 2G, 3G and 4G. It is good for us to have 5G. You understand? Because it is going to enhance business growth in the long run. 5G is where the world is going and we cannot afford you know, to stay behind because of all these uh, theories that people have. Fought. With the clear of things I have about the 5G, only God knows how it's going, to, it's going to be functioned. Those who want to remain where they are before their father was born, let them remain there. And those who want to move forward, let them move forward. With many developed nations of the world already far into 5G adoption, ICT experts say Nigeria cannot be left behind, especially as its deployment would speed up the growth of Nigeria's digital economy, among other benefits. International Telecommunications Union, that is ITU, which is an arm of the United Nations, and also World Health Organization. Both of them confirm that there is no any adverse health effect of uh, 5G. And for most average users, they probably wouldn't notice like uh, the difference unless maybe when they actually take into account that they can actually watch YouTube much, much faster now. They can actually download a whole movie or entire TV series in at the shortest time possible. While the deployment of the policy is set to take immediate effect and will be carried out in phases between now and 2025, getting it right in such a manner that would make the deployment beneficial to the country and the end users is the major expectation of Nigerians. And it Joseph Johnson, our NTA News. Now, the mobile telephone network MTN and Mafab Communications Limited have emerged winners of the Nigerian Communications Commission's NCC's 3.5 gigahertz fifth generation 5G technology spectrum auction. The 5G technology spectrum auction ended this evening with the total sum of $273.6 million per slot of 100 megahertz TDD. The bidders, which are Mobile Telephone Network, MTN, Airtel Nigeria and Mafab Communications, ended at the main stage, dropping down to two bidders. The Executive Vice Chairman, MCC, Professor Umar Damata, who announced the result, reiterated that the Commission followed due process for the bidding. While congratulating the winners and thanking the government for its support, 
support and commitment to the deployment of 5G technology in Nigeria. The EVC said the deployment would bring sustainable network improvements, higher connection speed, mobility and capacity, as well as low latency capacities to communications services in Nigeria. The Kano Meduguri Section 2 Expressway linking Shuarin in Jigawa State and Azare in Bochi State has been completed and handed over to the federal government for use. Minister of Water Resources Suleiman Adamu, who performed the inauguration on behalf of President Muhammad Bugari, says the road will reduce travel hardship on commuters on that axis. Muhammad Askira has details. It's finally commissioned. The road may reduce the rate of accidents. Transportation accessibility has been, has, been, has been subsidized, has been simplified. These are some of the views of motorists plying the newly inaugurated Kano Meduguri Dualize Expressway Section 2 linking Jigawa and Bauchi states. Before now, commuters spent over eight hours traveling between Kano and Meduguri, but with the completion of this Section 2 of the expressway and that of Section 3 linking Azare and Potaskum in Bauchi and Yobe states, it has been reduced to four hours journey. President Muhammad Buhari represented says the expressway will no doubt spur economic activity Activities between the three northeastern states of Bauchi, Yobe, and Borno, and their counterparts in the northwest zone. Our commitment in this government to improve road transport infrastructure, our determination to improve the ease of doing business, create jobs and prosperity to lift people out of poverty, brings us here today because the results of our investment are manifested. We have, in the last 18 days, handed over roads connecting 10 states. Today, it gives me immense pleasure to bring the good tidings of our administration to the people and government of Jigawa and Bauchi State. Governor Mohamed Badru Abubakar, who recounted federal government's projects cited in Jigawa State in various sectors, stated that history will be kind to President Mohamed Buhari for his impeccable leadership qualities. President Mohamed Buhari has done wonderfully well in all sectors of Nigerian economy. This road inauguration is one of many across the geopolitical zones of the country completed by the present administration and handed over for use. From Duty, Muhammad Askira, NTA News. Welcome back. Ushering in a season of good cheer, hope and joy echoed during the 2021 ASO Presidential Villa Christmas Praise Concert. Vice President Yemi Oshimbanjo and other top government functionaries at the event say God has been kind to the nation and will continue to strengthen her in her quest for progress and development. Oyemi Ajayi reports. The 2021 Christmas Praise Concert at the Aso Presidential Villa came with its unique perm, Christmas cheer and glad tidings. Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo and his wife led government dignitaries present, including the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, Minister of Women Affairs, then Pauline Talent, to worship God for keeping the nation on a strong footing and a path to progress and development in spite of the challenges faced in the course of the year. In his sermon, the General Overseer of the Deeper Christian Life Ministry, Dr. William Kumui, said there is a need for the people to reconcile with God as sin of mankind as separated man from God. That word history, when you analyze it and apply it to Jesus Christ, everything is about his story. His story, that is history. And when that story is revealed in our lives, redemption will come, realization will come, and the goodness of the Lord, which is the good news that the Lord has provided for everyone, it will come. In the Bible passages read, Governor of Delta State, Dr. Infai Okoa, and His Royal Majesty, Professor James Ayate, the Tortive, and other eminent Nigerians at the occasion extol the virtues of Jesus Christ and the mystery of his birth and his life as an example of service, selflessness, love and humility as key ingredients needed in the nation's quest for positive growth and development. Oyeyemi Ajayi, NTA News. Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malame, says Nigeria is in collaboration with various jurisdictions in its efforts to recover covering stolen assets stashed abroad. 
Malami made this known at the ninth session of the Conference of States Parties to the United Nations Convention Against Corruption, holding in Sham el Sheikh, Egypt. He says Nigeria has submitted a draft resolution entitled Enhancing Access to and the Use of Beneficial Ownership Information to Facilitate the Identification, Recovery and Return of Assets with Pakistan, State of Palestine, Peru, Saudi Arabia and Kenya. Malami also says that significant progress has been recorded in the efforts to combat corruption in Nigeria. Now, only fully vaccinated prospective core members will be allowed to register and participate in the scheme from January 2022. Director General of the National Youth Service Corps, NYSC, Brigadier General Shuaibu Ibrahim, stated this while addressing the 2021 Batch C Stream 2 set of core members in a virtual meeting. Olaika Ojon reports. Dance is coming in the face of reported cases of new Omicron variants in Nigeria. The Director General NYSC applauds the federal government's effort in the provision of vaccines across its orientation camps, vowing not to let down its guard, as safety of core members is non-negotiable. We have a policy that in the next orientation exercise, all incoming prospective members will show evidence of what of their vaccination. For core members that have been vaccinated, there is no chip or anything inside, so the COVID-19 vaccine is safe. The scheme urges the 2021 Batch C Stream 2 youth core members to build on skills acquired during the orientation course. Online Kaoju, NTA News. President Muhammadu Buhari has sent a get well message to his South African counterpart, Cyril Raphosa, who tested positive for COVID-19. A statement by the senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, Garba Shehu, quoted President Buhari as saying that his heart and prayers are with Raphosa of South Africa at this difficult moment of health condition and prays for his speedy and full recovery. The statement added that coronavirus pandemic is a re President Buhari uh, the, um, the statement added that coronavirus pandemic is a reality and no respecter of persons. President Buhari particularly reminded Nigerians to disregard the allegation that the pandemic is a foreign creation to depopulate Africa and boost the financial interests of Western pharmaceutical companies through vaccine production. He warned that lack of attention to medical advice and apathy are damaging to the government efforts to contain the spread of this deadly viral disease. The president therefore advised Nigerians to come out fully and get vaccinated. Nigeria is in diplomatic talks with the United Kingdom, United Arab Emirates, Canada and Saudi Arabia to reverse travel restrictions imposed on the country. Minister of Aviation Hadi Sirikar at National Briefing by the Presidential Steering Committee on COVID-19 says Nigeria's sovereignty remains paramount and mutual respect shall be guiding principle of ongoing discussions. Mitar Ben reports. Nigeria's plan to apply the principle of reciprocity over travel restrictions by several countries has triggered the opening of diplomatic channels of interactions with the respective countries. The Minister of Aviation hopes this could lead to a reversal of their restrictions. Once they refuse to delist us, we'll come back to the PSC and sit down as a house and decide the next step to take in the interest of our country. There is bilateral assets agreement between Nigeria and UAE as a country. We have followed the normal diplomatic route to continue to engage UAE to respect the letters and spirit of this document and there are huge signs that we are getting to resolving this matter and soon. Meanwhile, Nigeria will no longer accept vaccines with short shelf life from donor countries. Because of the scarcity of uh, the supply in the global community, uh, we had to receive these COVID-19 vaccines. The alternative would have been to leave Nigerians without a single opportunity. But at the Presidential Steering Committee and the Federal Ministry of Health, we took the right decision on behalf of Nigerians to accept these vaccines, deploy them quickly before their expiry. 
And because of that singular decision that is based on science, we've been able to vaccinate over 10 million Nigerians with vaccines that were received free of charge. Uh, the expired vaccines uh, had actually been uh, withdrawn. We are working with NAVDAC uh, to uh, schedule a date for when this destruction will take place. The National Primary Health Care Development Agency assures that no Nigerian has been administered with an expired COVID-19 vaccine. In Abuja, Mitaire, Ikben, NTA News. The current insecurity challenge bedeviling Nigeria can only be surmounted if Nigerians close ranks to confront it headlong. This was the view of former President Olusegu Obasanjo at a security dialogue convened by the Global Peace Foundation and Vision Africa in Abuja. Austin Anyebe completes the report. It was a gathering of 22 eminent Nigerians from different walks of life. Each of them has a stake in Nigeria project. Foremost among issues raised at the forum is the insecurity threatening the peace in the land, which is the main agenda of the meeting with the former president. These eminent Nigerians advocate legislation on state police and political will matched by action. We can assemble, we can meet, we can recommend, we can appeal, but we cannot legislate. And that is why we must go to them, we must carry them along. We find people killing innocent people, either in the name of religion or either in the name of a banditry or terrorism or whatever it is. And that's why we keep on calling on all of us to go back to our holy books. This forces us to take sides, or at least be sympathetic to these ideologies that continue to divide us. Even the first sitter and the neutral bystanders seem to have shifted positions. If we have embraced them as Nigerians and extend to them what we extend to Nigeria, or at least give them hope, just hope, you see a difference. Painting pictures of the devastating nature of insecurity characterized by banditry, kidnapping, and terrorism, participants speak of the betrayal of elites, lack of trust among Nigerians, as violence seems to be the only language that thrives. If we do not put our hands together, the crisis that we have here is not just going to be this one Nigeria. All our neighbors and almost the entire continent will be in a mess. With insecurity, every other sector is down. Private investors, kids can't go to school, we have sector kind of work. Every problem in this country belongs to everybody. If we, if two years ago it wasn't like this, it is now. The combination of policy and security have now created one country. President of the Global Peace Foundation called on Nigerians to achieve violence and find lasting peace in the country. In Abuja, Austin Anyebe, NT News. The Nigeria Liquefied Natural Gas Limited, NLNG, has awarded postgraduate scholarship to 11 Nigerian youths to pursue master's degree in high-ranking university in the United Kingdom. The beneficiaries who were selected based on merit were advised to be gold ambassadors of Nigeria in the UK. Gabriel Amunike reports. As part of its corporate social responsibility and investment in education, the Nigerian Liquefied Natural Gas Limited has put smiles on the faces of beneficiaries. The scholarships awarded include an all-paid living expenses and travels for each scholar, irrespective of the field of study. According to authorities of the Nigerian Liquefied Natural Gas, the scholarship scheme was launched to grow a pool of dedicated professionals to bridge the specialist skills gap and help build a better Nigeria. General Manager External Relations and Sustainable Development, Ayano Fatai Williams, says NLNG has recorded tremendous success in human capacity development. We are in business in Nigeria. Every country has its other side. We have ours, what you represent, what Nigeria stands for, and the future that Nigeria has. So it's a wonderful way for Nigeria NLNG to wrap up the year, one of our end of year activities. This is the sort of thing we should do always to end the year. So some stakeholders in River State law their digestion and appeal to NLNG to carry River State government along in selection process. I will suggest that when you want to start the process, you let us know. 
We are not going to interfere in what we think is best for you, but we will offer advice. Some of the beneficiaries speak on the impacts of the program. It was a very transparent process. I was not expecting to get um, the award. But as God will have it, I applied online and did, did a test. And I was called over, I was sent an email, which I'm very pleased about. Well, it was a challenging process, and I'm glad to have been selected uh, to study in the UK. The scheme was launched in 2012 with an annual intake of about 11 beneficiaries to study in leading universities in the UK. In Port Harcourt, Gabriel Amuniki, NTN News. Farmers had a clash and a community conflict as some of the security challenges brought about by lack of proper land administration. This organized a two-day workshop to enlighten land officers, traditional leaders and citizens on the new approach of government to land administration in the state under the Gumbi Geographic Information Systems GOGIS. A good land administration system is also essential in order to improve urban planning, support infrastructural development and proper environmental management. Gorgeous is using modern technology to prevent difficulties associated with the traditional way of land administration in the state. We have deployed advanced geographic information systems to manage land in the state, an effort that led us to revitalize the entire land administration and restore citizens' hope in the system. The idea by Gombe State is welcomed by her neighbors who are participating in the workshop. What I understand in your state is that there is misconception between the, the, the general population and what government wants to do in terms of land matters. But then with this kind of workshop and sensitization, it will enlighten the, the community leaders. This initiative is so fantastic, so encouraging. Besides ensuring peaceful land administration, Koji says implementation of the new approach would attract investors from within and outside the country, in Gumbi. Emmanuel Akila, NTN News. We'll take you now to our Lagos studio for more reports from that zone. Adeola will be our guide. Hello, Adeola. Hello, Kenny. An intervention fund that will address welfare-related issues affecting the judiciary, such as improved salary scale of judicial workers and provide enabling environment for speedy dispensation of justice is being advocated. Chairman House Committee on Judiciary Luke Onofiok reiterated this during an oversight visit to courts under the federal government in Lagos, Amaka O has details. The first spot of call for members of the Committee on Judiciary was the Court of Appeal, where the committee members were received by the Deputy Court Registrar, who said that over 11,900 cases are still pending in the court, while enumerating factors responsible for this to include paucity of funds, lack of befitting residential quarters for judges. He took the members on inspection of renovated sections of the court affected by the NSAS protests and retrofit technology in place to fast track virtual sittings and ongoing projects within the court premises. <laughs> Committee members also visited what used to be the residence of the first president of the Court of Appeal, still under contention, and all the residential buildings for judges which are in their need of renovation. The staff, the justices are lacking proper uh, accommodation. We are thinking if the National Assembly can assist us to develop the place, I think we'll be happy. We've been asking, we've been pleading, we've been making an advocacy for an intervention fund for the judiciary. The committee members then proceeded to inspect the 13.6 billion Naira Federal High Court Complex, where massive construction which began in 2011 is ongoing. The 15-story building, which occupies 17,500 square meters, is set to accommodate 20 courtrooms and two ceremonial courts, among other provisions to provide enabling environment for judges and judicial officers, as well as litigants. The National Judicial Council have been 
allocating enough funds for these projects, and that is why the project is moving the way it is. The National Industrial Court was the last spot of call for the lawmakers where they were received by one of the serving judges, Anthonia Ubaka. During inspection of facilities, they applauded the infrastructure and facilities of the court while emphasizing the urgent need for more funding be deployed to replicate such technology in other parts of the country. The House of Representatives Committee on Judiciary is made up of 42 members. In Lagos, Samaka O, NTA News. Rather than fold arms and surrender to the socio-economic challenges facing the country at the moment, Nigerians must roll up their sleeves, identify their spheres of influence, and join in efforts at redeeming the nation. A movement, New Tribe, Hope Alive, went to town with this message in Lagos, urging citizens to be intentional about developing the nation. Adeniyi Taiwo has details. Sport by the belief that it does not take a crowd to inspire a change, they came out, just a handful, but in high spirit, as they waved the Nigerian flag. The serene environment of Mobola Johnson train station, Alagumiji, is their contact point with other Nigerians for whom they have this message. I don't take care of my job. I am the solution in my country. Iritiola Ojekwa, who is the convener of New Tribe Hope Alive Movement, says while there are challenges, it will take every Nigerian standing up for the good of the country in their little two corners to effect sustainable change. If you hear that in that school they are cheating, for instance, they are, they are doing exam malpractices, you know this is like destroying the foundation of our children. And so you decide that, oh, we must see to the end of this. These nations that you are calling Senna Climbs today, they had issues mightier than we had less than 100 years ago. And today we are envying them, we are liking them. That's to tell you that these things are temporary. All we need to do is know it. So if you do not even have faith, in God, enough to believe it. Go and read history. Just say, God bless Nigeria. Start by talking to someone. Start by telling someone that Nigeria will be great and put in all your effort. And before you know it, we are there. Already, the advocacy appears to have resonated well with other Nigerians who now see themselves as part of the solution. Respective of your position, we should take responsibility of recreating the country. A better Nigeria requires total commitment from the leadership to the led. This social engineering advocacy began in Akure Ondo State three years ago is expected to go around the country making more food soldiers for change out of ordinary Nigerians. In Lagos, Adeni Taiwo, NTN News. And that's it from here. We'll take another break. The news will continue with Kenya in Abuja. Thank you for staying with us. Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo says relevant ministries, departments and agencies must see their role as supporting Nigerians who are engaged in different enterprises by creating a conducive and enabling a business environment. This was during the MSME Clinic Stakeholders Review Meeting at the Presidential Villa on how federal government agencies relate with micro, small and medium enterprises in the country. The Vice President explained that Nigerians are enterprising and need the right environment which the MDAs must facilitate by removing constraints to make things easy for the MSMEs to do their business and not to become a stumbling block or a toll gate. Minister of State for Industry, Trade and Investment, Samaria and Katagum, praised the stakeholders and state governors for their collaboration and cooperation in holding MSME clinics. The meeting was attended by heads and representatives of agencies, including Smedan, Bank of Industry, Nexim, BOA, Standard Organization of Nigeria, FERS, NAFDAQ, and others. Sugar Master Plan implementation to be rolled over, says National Sugar Development Council, as stock markets begin the week in a negative territory. Musa Abubakar brings us up to speed with details on business news. 
Thank you, Kenneth. Seven years into the implementation of the 10-year sugar master plan, indications have emerged that the plan may have to roll over due to prevailing socioeconomic implications. Speaking in Abuja, Executive Secretary of the National Sugar Development Council, Zach Adidiji, say though tremendous investments in this sector have been achieved over time, scarcity of foreign exchange and insufficient logistics are slowing the wheels of progress. With three more years to go over 200 billion naira worth of, of investment have been achieved through the backward integration program with thousands of jobs being created in line with the presidential initiative on jobs creation. The uh, backward integration, the 11 million metric ton shortage we have in Africa, it is one that we have capacity to fulfill. So in master plan percentage, well, apart from the consciousness and the well structured issue it has brought, so we've moved on in what we set out to. So, the last three years, what we have been planned to do one is to review and to question some of our assumptions whether that is what is required or not. And lastly, which I don't, may not want to reveal now, is that by God's grace, we will have to extend the implementation. Looking ahead, as it is, you said about 250,000 hectares of land will be needed for cultivation to achieve sugar sufficiency in the country. Now to stocks, the equities market closed on a positive note. The oil share index increased 1.26% at 42,411.12 points. And equity capitalization at 22.1 trillion naira, 229.6 million shares, value at 3.3 billion naira, exchange hands in 4,426 deals. The financial services industry lead activity chart with Unity Bank, Universal Insurance, BLC, and FBN holdings the most traded shares for well, that's business Mohammed Ibrahim is in our uh, Medugri network center thank you and welcome to Medugri provision of free medical services diverse health education and immunization against killer diseases are some of the health benefits offered by Borno State Government to mark Child and Maternal Week, which coincided with mass COVID-19 vaccination for civil servants and other members of the public in Medugri. Jadwa John Jasani reports. Stakeholders have sustained advocacy and sensitization on the need for regular access to quality healthcare services so as to build a healthy and prosperous society. Borno State Ministry of Health and the State Primary Healthcare Development Agency were emphatic on the need for the citizenry to take advantage of extensive health education, full vaccination of children and adults against killer diseases, among others, which the government has brought to their doorsteps free of charge. Other services to include access to vitamin A supplement, deworming tablets and long-lasting insecticide-treated nets, among others. Pregnant and lactating mothers have also been availed with antenatal care kits, courtesy of wife of Borno State Governor, Dr. Falmata Babagana Umarazulum. While lamenting that less than 10% of civil servants in Borno are vaccinated, the ministry and the agency are of the opinion that flagging the vaccination in the state secretariat will enable the workers get vaccinated. We are appealing to all our workers to come and take this vaccine. We are also looking forward to getting the, the Johnson & Johnson and the vice, Pfizer from the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency, which is going to be a single dose. Most especially our displaced persons will benefit from from that. Representative of the Sheikh of Borno, Awana Laminu of Borno, and that of UNICEF and WHO all advise the people to avail themselves for the vaccination against COVID-19 and other killer diseases. In Meduguri, Jedwa, John Jason, NTA News. That is it from